guys, Bobby Rio here with Jessica J. How you doing, Jessica? Hi, good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, glad to have you back. We've done a couple episodes. Um, one of the ones we've done together, Jessica's gone into her conversation stuff. Um, she's the author of a book called Speak to Spark Arousal. And she's got some really great stuff on connecting and kind of creating that chemistry and conversation. And then the last one we tackled, you know, how to decipher where you stand with a girl, how to know if it's time to move things forward, which brings us to this one, which is great in sort of the trilogy is um, the physical part of it, right? Getting, uh, touching her, getting that physical escalation going. And I wanted to get you on and kind of hear from a girl's perspective, what's, smooth what's creepy when's too much you know kind of kind of just feel out the whole realm because i know this is something that i personally struggled with of like kind of knowing like what to do when to do it right. i know a lot of my students also ask me that question all the time like how soon do i start touching or where do i touch her so i'd love to kind of get you on and pick your brain a little bit right i feel like especially nowadays men are so like i'm not allowed to touch that's sexual harassment that's sexual assault and what i have to say about that is you know are you afraid to touch yourself <laughs> I mean, not in that sense you probably aren't i hope you aren't but um are you afraid to touch your coworker when they're in the way are you afraid to touch your mom when you say hello to her it's a very it, it's ingrained in us to connect with one another physically um and we're supposed to Granted, nowadays we talk via text instead of phone, you know, we keep in touch with each other via social media. Um, so we've become so much far removed that it has had us questioning whether or not it's okay. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you right now, it's absolutely necessary if you're gonna have her feel anything for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, now I'm just thinking of like the whole Joe Biden thing. It's got people even thinking they can't do anything right now, you know? It's yeah, you know, crazy. that's so funny you mentioned it. I was looking at these pictures and as a woman, I'm, I'm very touchy with everybody. If you're a stranger, I, I'm going to hug you hello. That's just me. And I was looking at those pictures and I felt bad because that's stuff that I've done to people. And because he's a man in power, everybody's like, no, that's creepy and sexual. But it's, it's, it doesn't have to be if you know that you're coming from a good place yeah, i think one and thing it's done right yeah yeah and, and well i think one thing you said there is pretty pretty crucial right and i think it's something that guys should should pay attention to is that that's how you are with everybody right you're that yes. you're that way with your your girlfriends with guys right. like, and i think part of it is if you're not naturally like that like i was never naturally like that is you want to not just be like oh i'm with a girl i like i have to touch her you should be that way with other people so that when you do it, it's like more of your personality as opposed to like, why is this guy who's like all of a sudden touching me, but not touching anybody else. Whereas like, right. you know, if you were in a group and you like grab some guy, like, and I've seen you we've hung out where you're like, you know, and I don't look at that going, Oh, Jessica wants that guy. Jessica's trying to fuck that guy. Yeah. yeah exactly. Cause I know you, you know? So I think that that, that could help stave off some of that, you know, insecurity guys might have it. They start right. being that way. To, to everybody rather than just the girl they want and you know what and on the flip side it'll help you not take things the wrong way because i have a lot of guys think oh my god she touched me she's definitely mm -hmm. flirting when i when they can't see that i'm like that with everybody so yeah. if you think that it's a sexual thing um you're gonna train yourself to think oh this is bad i shouldn't touch her because you only touch somebody when you're sexual and she hasn't consented yet so getting comfortable with touching your friends your coworkers. And i'm not talking about you don't even have to hug your friends hug your coworkers. i'm talking about like hey do you want a cup of coffee pat them on the shoulder i'm gonna get something do you want something something as simple as that because if you can't get comfortable in your everyday life knowing this is okay this is okay it's never gonna feel okay to touch a woman that you eventually want to go home and touch naked yeah and a side note i've been reading a book called uh laws of human nature by robert green and he's oh, kind okay. of, yeah it's, it's worth reading definitely a lot of good stuff in it but he's yeah. uh doing a he does profiles of different people and he's talking about um you know politicians and different people and he, and he says one of the things that a good politician does and you know obviously joe, joe biden took it too far i guess but is touching because even if you're touching your guy friends like you mentioned um, people like have natural endorphins for being touched. And the more you're yeah. touching people, um, like you said, not in a sexual way, even just the, Hey, right. you want a cup of coffee pat on the back. Right. It, it makes them naturally want to be around you. They find themselves, um, having sort of an attachment to you in terms of friendship, right. in terms of good feelings around you. So there's a lot of benefits for doing it rather than just for the sake of getting better touching women. 
Yeah, I mean, it is a literal form of connection. Again, like I said, we're ingrained to do it. And I think one reason you can creep girls out is because, you know, a lot of times people don't understand that you can convey or you can communicate your energy and your emotions through your touch. They've done studies where like, they've had people like in certain emotional states and they'll make them touch other people. And these other people, 75% of the time, were able to decipher what emotion wow. the other person had. So if you go in and you're like, ah, oh, I don't really want to do this, but I know I have to do this. And you're not sure, she's going to be very unsure. Like, I don't think I want this guy touching me. So whatever you feel about touching in that moment, when you go to touch her, she's going to feel it too. So if you already feel comfortable because you're like, you know what, I'm the touchy guy. Like I touch my friends, my family, we're all good. This is what I do. Then she's going to feel that too. She'll be like, oh, this feels good. This feels okay. Now you, she's able to feel the connection she's meant to feel from you other than all the other bullshit you've told yourself about it. Definitely. So let's turn it around though. And let's look at it from a more specific standpoint, right? Okay. So you meet a guy off Tinder or whatever you show up at the bar first, uh -huh. first date, right? Um, you're into him, right? You're, you're, you're having a good conversation. He's using a lot of the speak to spark arousal material. So things are going well. And now what in your mind is like, are you expecting from a girl standpoint, right? Like, does that make sense what I'm saying? Like, where I do, and I actually have an exact story of an exact scenario about this. Um, I did meet this guy on Tinder, and he was a heart surgeon. He looked like a Calvin Klein model. He was in his 30s, so he's still pretty young and like really good looking. And I remember, and he was really funny, and we were flirting via text. It was great. I was like, Jessica, don't fuck this up. Like, you have one job, just don't fuck it up. <laughs> So that, that was my inclination going into this date. Like, this guy's a catch. Like, yeah. I better do this right. Um, and from the second we met, from the first hug hello, I kind of already knew that mm, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. Um, it was a very, I don't even know how to describe it. I am on video, too. It was a very, like, there was no embrace. Okay. Do you know what I mean? It was more like a our arm, his arms were touching my body and then he like, let go. So we sit down and you we're a little happy. grind in there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I was, expecting <laughs> to grind it. I was ready to, let's do this. But there was nothing of that. It wasn't even no. a nice hug. Yeah. It was out. just a, it was a platonic, like hugging like your, platonic, like old grandma. Right. A grandma that's not yours. Like, <laughs> you know, that's what it felt like hugging a grandma that's not yours. Why am I doing this? I don't know. So we sit down, but we go on to have probably the most intellectually stimulating conversation I've ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. To this day, I still remember like feeling like so like enriched in this conversation. He's hilarious. We're having a great time. And it didn't even dawn on me that he didn't touch me at all until like three, four hours gone by. We're at the bar that long, like talking, laughing, flirting. He hasn't touched me once. And the only way I realize it is we get in the Uber and we're like, let's get McDonald's. We're like drunk at this point. We get in the Uber and he goes to like touch me across the back seat, like to tickle me. And I like slapped him so fast. I was like, ew, don't touch me. And that was my initial wow. response. And I was even taken back by it. Cause I was like, oh, I thought we were having a good time. Like in my head, I was like, I thought we were having a good time. But at that point I felt like this is my brother. Like we're having a good time we're laughing we're having great conversation we can hang out all day but because he hadn't touched me in the three four hours we had been together it was kind of like that door had closed already so I felt very uncomfortable him like reaching across and trying to tickle me no less which is uncomfortable for anybody yeah but yeah I was very put off by that that's interesting yeah yeah I can I can remember, you know, years ago being on dates where like, I was like, you know, going through, I can even remember my first, my first date ever was <laughs> the sixth grade. I remember being at the movie theaters with some girl and uh, my friends are like, put your arm around her. And I'm like, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Oh, I love it. I love and it's, uh, but, but you know, that, that actually followed me, you know, years later and yeah. I, exactly what you're, what he went through, right. Is like, as a guy, you kind of know there's like a window that passed. Right. And once that window passed, it's like you feel he probably felt creepy doing what he was doing because that window yeah. passed. Um, you know what? It's funny you said that he probably felt creepy. That's how I thought. I felt creeped out. He was on the exact opposite end of 
the car. You know what I mean? It's not like we got in, he snuggled me close. Like, yeah. he's on the exact opposite end. His long freaking arm comes and, like, stretches across. It felt creepy. And I could tell that he felt unsure doing it, too. Because three, four hours go by, you don't touch me once since our first awkward hug hello. It was the same thing as I was talking about earlier. Like, you convey that same emotion. Like, should I be doing this? Like, no, you shouldn't. Like, yeah. I don't feel like you should. So what would have been... What... All right, forget the awkward grandma hug he gave you in the beginning, right? Yeah. Now you guys are hanging out. You're 10 minutes into the date, 15 minutes. Like, what would have been the progression that would have been natural? Like, when, when it goes really well, like, a, a guy that it did, you just had the chemistry, right, physically and yeah. um, verbally stimulated conversation. What was the physical aspect that was happening early on? Okay, something as simple as, you know, lead me by the small of my back when you're asking me what i want for a drink like oh what do you want to drink like to hold my elbow when we laugh like hold my hands i was very touchy with him like again yeah. i don't remember being specifically touchy i know that i just am and if we're sitting side by side at a bar like i'm always touching you um but that's how i am like touch her on the shoulder when you both are laughing grab hands and laugh something like that i always say to touch on a high point because what that does is it reinforces that, oh, I feel this, you know, euphoria because of this person holding me right here. It's another way of, like, um, activating those other sensors aside from the ones she's feeling emotionally is to hit her physically. Don't hit her physically, but, you know, to activate her physically. So physically, just, yeah. Simple things like that. And we okay. had more than enough moments for that. And he had more than enough opportunities, so take those. So here's a, a specific question, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always recommend guys, you know, obviously we said, you know, the example we gave, you met a guy in a bar, it's, it's, you're sitting across from them. What about from a girl's perspective, if you're on a dinner date, you know, for a first date, right. how does the guy, I get guys ask me this, I go, don't do the dinner date, but obviously. I, I always say don't do the dinner date for the first date. But obviously some guys, day. you know, they're going to do it. And yeah. then they say, well, it's like awkward, you know, so what is what would you say? Is there any, any tips you can give guys if they do do the dinner date to make it that, that maybe some guy has done it to you where you're like, Oh, okay. Like he found a way to still get that physical contact in over the course of the first hour and a half that you guys are sitting there, right. you know, without reaching over and, you know, which could be, I mean, if you're really connecting, you know, yeah. you get the hand and it's easy because it's like, all right, you know, you put your hand down, but that's like, that's a level where it's like you both know it's on, but if you're not at that sure, is there ways to kind of get that going? I mean, it's hard. I Okay, so I'm picturing, right now, I'm picturing the most awful situation where you both are at like, the both of you show up, they put you at a table for four, and yeah. it's a square, so you're not gonna sit right next to her, that's kind of weird, you probably have to sit directly across from her, that's probably the worst case scenario. So to eliminate that, I would say make sure you sit somewhere where you can sit next to each other. Worst case scenario, sit at like the two corners. If that's not possible, you're standing across from each other, you're gonna have to find a way to, you know, one thing I say, talking with your hands is always an easier way to mm. connect if you can't connect, because how, how can I connect? Like when we do stuff like this, right? Yeah. Um, you're, you're showing, you're being, you're demonstrating touch without being able to. Mm -hmm. That's probably the easiest way you're going to do it. So, I mean, I doubt she'd sit there like this the entire yeah. time. Chances are, like, if you are able to get her on a date and you are able to talk to her, she's not going to stand like this. She might have her elbows on the table. She might have her hands on the table. Touch as much as you can on those high points, on those connecting points. You're from Jersey. I'm from Jersey. Me too. Touch each other. It's moments like that. So here's a move that um, I think you know, John Sin. Uh, he, he had told me, and I've told some of my students to do this, and, and some of them think, well, it's going to be weird. I want to hear it from your girl's point of view. You're, yeah. you're in that, maybe you're at a booth, right? Mm. and you're across from the, like the four person booth. Yeah. Now after 10 minutes, what John would do, and this was John, John's way. He said he would get up to go to the bathroom. And then when he came back, he would sit next to her and say, Hey, I got to show you, you know, Hey, move over. I want to show you something or move over. Let me take a sip of your drink. And I thought that if the vibe is good enough, it could work, but it, it really depends from your perspective. What would, you know, what would your reaction be if a guy did that kind of move? I was going to say exactly that. If the vibe is good enough, you have to. Um, but if it's not, it is going to be, oh, Weird, right? yeah. This a, yeah, this is a ploy. But if you and I have been laughing and having a grand old time, you leave and come back, like, okay, move over. 
I gotta show you something. Yeah. That I would hope you did something like that. So it depends. On I'm you. not gonna do it, but yeah. you know, if you do find yourself in that situation, which happens plenty of times, like nobody wants to be awkward and be like, fine, let's sit next to each other. <laughs> nobody wants to say that. Yeah. Um, but if you have had a good enough day where you, you know, you're laughing, talking, flirting, you gotta get up and do that do that at some point. Okay. So let's say the guy's established now that's some level of touching, right? Maybe, maybe you're not on the date. You're not sitting across from each other. Maybe that date now, now the date ended, you, you were talking with your hands and enough that the illusion of touch was happening. Now right. you guys get up to have an after drink, right? Um, what is the progression? Is there a progression or it's the same level? Like, do you expect the guy as the date goes on, as the vibe is getting stronger, you're feeling more of the chemistry, um, do you expect him to be more overt with his touching as opposed to previously where he might have been like touching you quickly and then moving away? Is he now, do you now want him, you know, maybe like you give the example of when you're walking, he puts his hand behind you and it's like a quick like guide, but he's not leaving right. his hand there. At right. some point, do you want him to be a little bit more overt, leave his hand there a little bit longer? Are you expecting that? Right. Um, I like that you mentioned that, you know, being more overt. If you go from zero to 60, it's going to, you know, we're going to yeah. feel the fucking wind in our face and be overwhelmed. Um, but what I like to tell guys is to do the touch and squeeze before you leave. Because you do kind of get accustomed to it where, like, I, now this, I'm talking to my friend. But you don't want friendly touches. You don't want her feeling like you're doing friendly touches. You yeah. also don't want her feeling like you're doing the sucking touches where, yeah, we're going to pound town later. Um, so I'm talking about, like, you know, when you guys touch and you're laughing and you like grab hands really quick, like squeeze her hands before you let go. Cause this is a, this is a new touch where she's like, Ooh, it's a little deeper. You know, yeah. you're, you're being more, you're giving more pressure. So it is activating new stuff in her brain and be like, Ooh, this is going a little further than it usually was. Um, so something like that. If you are like leading her by the back, like a rubber back before you, you know, pull your hand away, things that are a little more pressure. You're putting more pressure on her, so to speak. But you're not putting more sexual pressure on her, where you're, like, holding her hand now. A lot of my girlfriends get freaked out, like, it was it was going great, but then, like, he was holding my hand and <laughs> interlacing fingers, and we're not there yet. So we don't want to go too fast, but we do want to let her know that you are taking things further. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. <coughs> it's interesting you mentioned the hand, because the hands really are the good gauge that I always yeah. <clears throat> would go for is – you kind of you kind of bleed right where it's like uh you may do the quick quick hand hand thing you know the high five quickness or you know whatever like you're saying you're leading her somewhere but you always drop it i mean that's key like you yeah. said the worst is like if you're walking her through a crowd it's great to grab her hand yeah then earlier in the night you don't want to if it's too soon you don't want to hold it right? right but you can also gauge right as a guy when you're holding her hand, is she squeezing your hand back? Is she rubbing right. your hand? Or is her hand kind of limp like she's uncomfortable? Right, are you letting her hold her dead fish? Yeah. Right. So it's a great way as a guy to kind of gauge where you're at if you're not sure, right? Because you, you can kind of tell, like, if she's giving you any kind of, like, rubbing back, it's more likely that, okay, you can keep going. But if she's giving you the, the dead fish, then yeah. you probably you probably need you to. You probably want to let that thing down the river. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, okay, so you're getting a little bit more, you're getting a little bit more um, touchy as the night goes on. What is the level that you are going to get to pre, like, we're not talking like, I'm not going to get into the, you know, the, the foreplay back at your place, but the level <laughs> for a guy, like, how far is he going to take it in this environment that you would feel comfortable with to know like we are on our way back to the place. Does that make sense what I'm, what I'm saying? Like, right. So that um, to create the vibe, a seductive enough vibe where it becomes like kind of knowledge, like, yeah, we're not going to, we're not going to go to the parking lot and take separate cars home. We're going to go back together. Like what has to be there in terms of the physical connection for that to happen? Um, I would say one thing I like is, you know, teasing. Teasing is a really good way to, I feel bad saying this, but it's a really good way to be dominant in this, you know, seduction, dance, or what have you. Um, but I really like being able to tease and then hug her. Um, because, okay. again, going back to the gauging how she feels, if she lets you hug her and you guys can laugh and hug, now I know that I will probably let this guy hug me naked. 
Like, so if you can, ha if you get to the point where you can put your arm around her, where you can lead her through the crowd and she is holding yours back, like, I know if I hold a guy's hand back, we're probably going to pound down. Like, there's certain things that if you can gauge that she is not only letting you get away with these touches, but she's also engaging and even, you know, taking them further herself, um, I would say that's really your key okay. moment to, okay, we can go, is if you feel her not only matching it, but maybe she's taking it a, level, a notch up too. Yeah, and what's great about what you said with the teasing too, is that teasing gives you an excuse to touch her, but right. you can also use it as an excuse to kind of do like the push-pull in a sense, right? Like you right. hug her and then you say, get away from me, nerd, or something like that. Yeah. And that yeah. way you're not that creepy guy who like stays you're not that there. that creepy guy hanging on to her. Like, yeah, it allows like, you to keep moving. Yeah. Great. Yeah, it, it keeps you moving forward, but not like so much that it's like weird, so. Right. It also puts you in a position of, you know, her having to chase you as well, in a sense, you know? You're not the one like, you're amazing. I want to touch you. I'm touching you again. Here I'm touching you on the good points that Jessica yeah. and Bobby talked about. No, you're giving her a chance. It's like, oh my God, I hate you. Like, oh, you're okay. So you know what I mean? To get her active in this role too, which we want. We really want to be able to chase you back. Nice, nice. When it comes to touching, is there any other final pieces that we might have missed? Or, or I guess a specific question, and then I'll, give you, I'll open up for the general question. You mentioned the guy, the heart surgeon. You kind of went, ew, don't do that, right? Yeah. Um, you mentioned the, the, the limp hand that, that a, a girl might give a guy. What else do you do? So a guy, we kind of talked about, we've talked about in the previous video, the signs that she likes you and, and whatnot. So what do you do in terms of, like, how do you close yourself off? Is there anything that is a common girl code for, like, yeah, yeah that, like, I'm, I'm not making myself available to be touched. Like, what do you do when you're, like, this guy's trying to get to that next level physically, and right. I'm shutting it down? Is there anything that pops in your head that, that you find yourself doing or your girlfriends do? I mean, one thing you mentioned was, you know, hands, being able to gauge with your hands. They are the most sensitive parts of your body. Um, so if you notice she's making the most sensitive parts of her body unavailable to you. Mm. That's a very good way to gauge. Um, I'll, I'll hold my elbows. So in its way, I'm kind of keeping myself from touching you because I'm, because I'm a touchy person. So I'll, I'll hold my elbows to kind of keep me from touching you. And it's what she's doing is she's creating a barrier so okay. that you're not able to. Um, anytime she's turned away from you, um, yeah you should see her start to close up. This is our most sensitive areas. If you see her put anything in front of you. And it's funny, by the end of the night, like I had that guy come and sleep over. I know, I'm like, <laughs> I'm the most misleading chick you will ever meet. I forget who else says this to you. I'm the most misleading chick you'll ever meet. But, um, right, Alcorn. But yeah, so he slept over after McDonald's and me not letting him touch me. And he kept trying after that. She was like, let me kiss you. And I'm like, no, don't. I kept saying like, no, don't. And so he's like, but you're going to let me sleep with you? I was like, yeah, you can't, you can't drive home. And so like, he got in bed and I took like four king size pillows and put them between us. So anytime she, there's a barrier between yeah. us, whether it's space, you know, she might move back a little bit or she might, you know, like find ways to um, look behind her. That's her way of like, let me get out of this. Let me, okay. let me put something between us so that he can't get to me. Definitely. So let's, let's get wrap it up with some conversation. I want to hear about, you know, for the guys that don't know, you have a video where you kind of talk about something called the override effect. And it's a lot of that, I think, plays into what we're talking about, because to get to that point where you're, I guess the, the way is the easier the conversation's flowing, right? The more connection she feels verbally to you, the easier that's going to happen. If you can't talk, if you get there on a date and you're not able to have that vibe, it's going to be really fucking hard, even if you're super good looking, to just feel right. like I can just touch her. Like, whereas the other hand, if, if the connection is there verbally and you just right. like what the kind of stuff you teach is a lot about getting that connection fast, right? right. And if that connection is really fast, then five minutes into the date, you can start with the, the touches on the back and the, and right. the eyes. And next thing you know, 30 minutes later, you're at that comfortable level and you're not the guy in, you know, the cab with the creepy creepy grass. Yeah. Oh, I hope he never watches these videos. Um, but yeah, so basically the override effect is getting her to feel, you know, we talked about being able to convey the emotion via touch. Um, and you can do that with your words. You could do that via touch. You could do that via your presence. Um, what it does is it 
our logical emotions, women are so, I hate saying this, but we're, I don't hate saying this, but we're so much more able to experience our emotional selves way better than you guys. So while you guys can sit and talk about like sports all day or like shoes or, you know, where you go golfing, um, us ladies, we talk about like our relationships, the things that make us happy, the things that make us really angry, really sad. Um, so if you're sitting there and you're able to convey that, hey, lady, we're going to fuck tonight and you're going to love it. I'm not going to think, oh, I have to go home yeah. and my friends are here and oh, how am I going to get there? No, it just goes out the fucking door because now we need to have you. And once you're able to activate that through this whole process of speaking to spark arousal, <laughs> that's, that's when she, all logical sense of rationale goes out the door and she's like, I need this to happen for me right now. And her girlfriends are like, yeah, we need this to happen for you too. <laughs> No, but and, and any guy listening has probably experienced that, right? And I tell clients all the time that, you know, they'll be like, well, she said she was tired. And I'm like, no, if a girl, if there's no excuse a girl can give it that like, I, I've been on both sides, right? I've had girls give me the I'm tired and it was bullshit. They were just weren't in. And then you've had the girls that it's like three in the morning and they have to be at work at seven in the morning and, and they're, they're still there. coming home they're because it, there. It, it, they're, it's not a rational decision, right? And if she's giving you a rational decision, like, Oh, I have work tomorrow. It's going to be a busy day. That means you haven't triggered the other part of her brain that overrides that rational decision. So exactly. um, just as a video, and if you haven't watched it yet, it's at tsbmag.com forward slash uh, forward slash spark. And I highly recommend it. I, you know, as guys know, I, I ask her to come on quite often because I really respect her opinion. And I really like what she teaches about what's great about what I think you'll find in the video. And, and even if you uh, purchase her book, is that it's a lot of it's based on connection. So it's not awkward stuff. She's not giving you these like weird pickup lines to you. She's actually teaching you how to connect in a way very fast with the woman that creates all these other emotions without you having to like, you know, verbally talk about say it's not, it's none of that. It's just really strong. Me and you are together. We're on the same team sort of connection that then makes all this touching stuff that we talked about throughout this video really, really easy. So tsbmag.com spark there's a link in this video and you should really really check it out thanks for uh joining us this is cool thank you awesome thanks for having me